Welcome, Mentees, to another episode of Reviews in a Flash. I'm the Astonishing Melanie. And I am the Uncanny Omar. And today's episode of Reviews in a Flash is brought to you by Darkstar916. So thank you, Darkstar. Thank, thank you to all our patrons. Uh, we publish videos every day. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about subscribing. Now, we're going to do a, I guess, spoiler-free review mm -hmm. of Got Shaper. Uh, by Boom Studios, it is $20. Nineteen ninety nine, to be yeah. exact. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you have to be exact. On the penny. Okay. <laughs> anyway. What does she believe? Uh, so, this was a great read, especially if you're looking for something that is a little bit meatier that is, uh, isn't is going to take you like that to read through. Um, it's by Simon Spurrier, and the artist is Jonas Schoonface, and they work really well together. Simon Spurrier has a tendency to choose his artist. Like, oh, okay. So he's yeah, the, this definitely matches his story. Yeah, I think, and that's what he does. He, he wrote Coda. He wrote uh, The Spire, which the Astonishing Amanda and I reviewed. Or The Amazing Amanda. What are we? What is she? You're amazing. Uh, She's I'm... astonishing. No, astonishing. I'm astonishing. <laughs> Uncanny Omar cannot remember anything. Anyway, we reviewed, but then that review got lost in the hard drive oh. crash. So that kind of oh. sucked. But it was a wonderful book. And then he also is known to have written the uh, X-Men Legacy. Uh, not Legacy. Legion. X-Men Legion. No, uh, Legacy. No, Legion. Okay. He wrote Legion, I, I promise. Okay. It was written by Cy Spurrier. Okay. I not Simon Spurrier, but I remember Cy Spurrier. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it instead of arguing back and forth. So the premise of the story is in 1958, the laws of physics went kablooey, and there's no electricity. <laughs> it can't happen. Um, combustion doesn't work in cars. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that it's years later, um, an alternative is found that people are being born of personal gods. And these gods have the power to, I don't know, transform, have wheels, and ca uh, carry you around somewhere. It's like your own personal or, genie, if you mm -hmm, will. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they take care of the money. They don't talk, though. Okay, so uh, those who are unfortunate enough to not be born with a personal god are god shapers. So they're looked down upon because they... Um, yeah, don't have a god, but however, society needs them because they are able to sh change the shape of the personal gods, um, look different, uh, have different abilities. It kind of reminds me of people like with their cell phones that it's something you always have with you, right? This god, and hey, I want a new Otterbox case. Let's sure. get a god shaper in here and then kick them out because you feel so much disdain for him. Anyway. That's a really good uh, analogy. Yeah. Or, can, can, because I didn't make that connection at all. Mainly because... Well, and I'll talk about my issues with I it. I after just we, now. Well, after we look uh, at the art, I'll, I'll talk about my issues <laughs> with the story. Um, so, Annie, the main character, as you see here. Annie? He's, uh, see, I pronounced or it N.A. N.A. Yeah, N.A. N.A. Um, he is a gosh shaper, but he has paired up uh, with Bud, who is a ghostless god. Like, when somebody dies, they're god turns into a ghost and then dies but he did not um so they hustle people like he looks hustle. like he um doesn't you know because it looks like na doesn't uh he's not god shaper that he's got a personal god yeah and i really like bud he's cute <laughs> <Okay>. so actually <laughs> let's while we're talking about that let's look at the artwork really quick all right, so let's take a look at this artwork by jonas goonface who by the way has a very cool name mm -hmm. Now, he did everything in here. He did the colors, he did the inks, and yeah, he did the artwork with the exception That's of the so lettering cool. I like that by Colin Bell. So this is what the artwork looks like. Like it's a, how do I describe it? Almost indie, cartoony yeah. kind of mm -hmm. style that but he has. But you had fun designing all these personal gods. Yeah, and that's what makes it fun. Like part of the fun is finding out what these gods I do wonder... and what their powers are. I wonder if Spurrier like said, hey, make this kind of a rhino guy. Or if he's like, hey, do whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of splash pages much like this one here towards the very beginning. I liked reading this one. I liked following the dialogue as he was going around. Well, uh, that's what I was going to mention. Gig. I like the way that the panels are laid out and how easy it is to follow the characters with the dialogue. And I think I guess it helps that you're the inker colorist and the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what his art style looks like. I think it's it fits the book. And as I mentioned before... 
Spurrier just knows who to choose. Yeah, I like uh, his use of blood because it gets a little violent sometimes. So overall, I think this book, what would you say, teen plus? I oh yeah, def plus. definitely. Well, I don't think it's because, mature. Uh, no, not mature, but I mean, there is a lot of sex, so teen plus. Yeah, teen plus for sure. It's no berserk. Now that we've looked at the artwork, and before we give our final thoughts, uh, without spoilers or anything, I, I did want to talk about the story. Because Cy Spurrier has this ability to just create his own languages, like his oh, own yeah. slang. Oh yeah, that's a really important part. And he did that in, in, in the Spire. And I really didn't have an issue with that in Spire. I think I got used to it just because I was just drawn by the story. In this, it took me a long time to get into it. So much so that I think halfway through, I was like, I think I'm done with this book. I can't finish it. But because, you know, we want to make the review fair, I, I push myself through. So when you called it meaty, mm -hmm. it does, it, it, it's a sit down and read and take your time kind of mm -hmm. story. And you're right. The, the made up language does add to um, the work it takes to read through this. Mm -hmm. um, the, I, I appreciated the mystery like i wanted to know about bud's past because you get little clues yeah. or um even why did the laws of physics stop working what um what how is this society working what is na trying to go towards and i'll tell you in this uh i'm gonna guess first volume because it ends on a cliffhanger right i i yeah i think so um he, I think he is starting to have focus as a character because throughout the the thing, it's yeah. kind of like he's just drifting. He doesn't know what he wants and lots of gratuitous sex. And I was going to say, other than the hustle that he has and all the meaningless sex, like, I don't think there was that much drive to him up yeah, until was it, towards it was the end. Yeah, it wasn't sexy sex. Like, it was... He was just meeting up with everybody. It was... You could tell how depressed and da down he was. He was looking for meaning in his life. And yeah. People, I mean, he was taking advantage of people and people were taking advantage of him. Uh, Damn, you, you. Okay. I'm curious to see what you give it. So is that it? You want to give it our final score? Sure. Okay. Uh, so my final score out of five, I'm going to give this a three out of five. I really enjoyed it, but I really had to push myself to read it. Had not, like, it's one of those books I think I probably would have given up. And I hate to say that. Because we weren't, like, if we weren't doing this show, right? So, three out of five for me. The artwork by John Goonface really, uh, I got used to it. I didn't dig it at first, but then I kind of, uh, it really fits the story. So, what about you? What did you give it? 3.78 out of five. <laughs> We're going to round that up to a four. No, no, three, three. A three, really? Yeah, so, because of my rating, it's just personal how it touches my heart. Okay. I think... It's a fantastic story. I love the premise. I love the mysteries. But geez, just so depressing. It is a downer. <laughs> and it's difficult to get through the language. That uh, So I kept reading because I wanted to find out. but Or I wanted to find out what happened. But it, it didn't speak to me. Okay. Except little Bud. He was cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so a three and a three. There you mm -hmm. have it. Three out of five for Sice Barrier's God Shaper. Uh, so yeah, we... Stuck at home and quarantine, most most people are, so we're doing a lot of reading. So I'm reading a Berserk volume a day. She's reading Berserk. I'm reading through, <laughs> rereading through X Man, reading through Amazing Spider Man for old reader, new reader, and then reading. We'll be doing some more reviews on the channel, so keep an eye here. Um, yeah, you want to sign us off? Like my husband mentioned, that he is posting videos every day. So <laughs> hit that subscribe button. Um, and thank you to our Patreons. Hit that like button, please. Am I listing everything? You're you're doing good. You're doing good, baby. Stay minty. That's not our damn sign Stay off. Stay healthy. Stay healthy and safe, everybody. Thank you for watching. Now, before we give our final... Okay, no. Now that we've looked at the artwork... Now before... <laughs> right, it, it's not just the electricity. Like, it's everything else, too. That doesn't work. Like, why are you looking at me? <laughs> Like what? I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. Let's do that. Let's do that again. Okay. Like, there is nothing else that doesn't work. Combustion. Though. Combustion. Okay, it's, it's not like just cars. Like, oh, you did. <laughs>